lot of us um, have made a lifestyle choice to, to live here. We love fishing on the rivers and going out in the natural environment. Roger Knight has been fishing the Murray River near Barham in New South Wales for decades. He loves reeling in a catch, but too often it's the pest fish carp on the end of his line. The carp boom at the moment um, obviously is concerning as a fisherman. They utilise so many, so much of the food resource. Carp stir up sediment which kills off aquatic plants that native fish eat. Recent flooding has led to a carp breeding bonanza. This carp can live for up to 25 or 30 years. A large female fish uh, can be six or eight kilos, and so we're talking about 1.5, maybe two million uh, uh, eggs from a carp, and from a similar sized native fish would have about half a million eggs. Lots of carp today, Mark. Yeah. Fish ecologist Ivor Stewart estimates there could be about 350 million carp across the nation. Four carp there. The pest was introduced to Australia in the mid-1800s, but in the 1960s some escaped from a fish farm and floods saw their numbers proliferate. But we don't want to have to deal with carp. No, we don't want to deal with carp. We've got to get rid of the carp. It was back in 2016 when then Federal Agriculture Minister Barnaby Joyce announced a radical plan would be considered to wipe carp out. We are afflicted in this nation, we are afflicted with this disgusting, mud-sucking creatures. $15 million was committed to examine the release of a carp herpes virus. But almost seven years on, no decision has been made. I think the carp herpes virus is one of our strongest landscape options for carp control. Ivor Stewart believes there is enough evidence to support the release of the virus. The government's own researchers estimate it could kill between 40 to 60 per cent of the carp population. We're not looking at um, driving carp numbers to zero eradication. We're looking at driving them below density impact thresholds, which is driving them way below their current levels. That quantum of knockdown may be enough to tip the balance in favour of native fish. But there is resistance to using a virus to kill carp. In South Australia, Tracy Hill and her husband have set up a boutique carp fishing business, which supplies the Adelaide restaurant trade. Hi guys, got your order today. Good, how's it going? It's that perception that because they're a pest, they don't taste any good. Awesome. Look at that. They don't have a muddy taste if they're looked after and prepared properly. It is a pure protein source and it's currently going to waste. Tracy says carp are consumed in many parts of the world. She says Australia should make the most of the potential food source. Yeah, that's really good. What do the customers think of it? Uh, customers love it. Everyone from singer Phoebe Bridges to tennis player Novak Djokovic. Um, and they both had it multiple times in our restaurant and they love it. While the carp herpes virus has never been released as a biocontrol measure, it has been detected in more than 30 countries. Government scientists say the virus will only kill carp, but there is evidence that pest fish can build immunity. We keep hearing short-term pain for long-term gain. I think it'll be long-term pain for not a lot of gain. And that's exactly one of the reasons why we need to be a little bit cautious about going the full hog, if you like, uh, on, on releasing that virus. It does seem, from the scientific evidence that we've received so far, that it can make a difference, but as you say, it's not a total solution. In South Australia, the recent floods have washed thousands of carp out the mouth of the Murray and onto beaches. If the virus was released, many more fish would end up dead in a river system used for drinking water, agriculture and tourism. There will be big impacts. We need to plan really carefully and uh, fund this properly to clean these fish up and to use them uh, for the best possible purpose. It will just create chaos in the tourism industry especially. Imagine having 
several years of dead carp washing down and um, sitting outside their towns and their holiday houses. It, it won't be good. Yes, it is a pest species, but sometimes it's better the devil you know than the devil you don't. The Federal Agriculture Minister, Murray Watt, says he's aware of the challenges ahead. We want to be cautious about this. Uh, we want to take industry with us. We're now consulting with the states and territories and industry uh, about the implementation of that plan. In statements to 7.30, Queensland, Victoria and South Australia said they were awaiting further research, including on the potential risk to native fish. The New South Wales Agriculture Minister has called on the Commonwealth to set a date for release of the virus as soon as possible. I can't give you a precise date, but we're conscious that this is, a, this is something that's important to people uh, and we want to get it moving as quickly as possible. I think someone who releases a virus into our major waterway in Australia is going to be a very brave government. Back at Barham, Roger Knight is worried about further delays in decision making. Yeah, <laughs> He's just reeled in a silver perch, a species he hopes will come off the endangered list if carp numbers can be reduced. Yeah. When you start seeing um, small fish like silver perch in the system, um, that's e extremely encouraging as a fisherman. The, the, the more species you have in an ecosystem, the more resilient it is.